All right, we're going to call this special meeting of the Board of Education order. Rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a motion to approve the meeting agenda. Ms. Downey, is there a second? Ms. Stowe? All those in favor of approving the meeting agenda? Ms. Olson? Aye. Great, that passes you zero. Thank you. Mr. Sure. Sure. Just a point of information here. Um, I, w I was asking uh, from the board secretary, but our board okay. assistant, sure. where the documents are for this meeting. And he said he didn't. Anyway, there's none printed here. But so I asked him if it was what was posted, and apparently it's not posted. So I think we have a little bit of a legal problem on our hands in that the board members, through email or receipt of documents for this meeting, that were not posted for the public. And that's problematic us to be conducting business on documents that have not been made that we're in receipt of yeah. that are not available to the public I, I can't imagine I mean I think we're off into a a, uh, a proper disclosure and a FOIA problem right now well so I'm not so sure I agree uh, because they are actually going to be presented tonight in their entirety on the screen. Also, they'll be made available on the website. We're not taking any votes tonight. This is a discussion item only. It's the first time we're taking this up. So it wouldn't be taken up as an action item until our meeting next week. So yeah, there'll be plenty of time for those documents to be made available. I am not... I don't think we're supposed to be conducting business like that. How did, I mean, just out of curiosity, how did this happen that it didn't get posted? All right, we can't hear you. So I'll be close to the mic. My question was, how did it happen that we're having a meeting with documents that the board has seen, but they're for the content of this meeting and they're not posted? Yeah, when we got them late. Uh, we did get them late last night, and I'm not sure that this is working, but uh, we did get them late last night, emailed them to the board. They'll be posted tonight after the presentation, which is generally what we do when we have a presentation like a PowerPoint. They are on your website. Yeah, that can't be. That. Tony, I, just with all due respect, I've been on board a long time. That's never been our practice. We can't conduct meetings where the board is in receipt of information and that information has not been made available to the public. If it's something the board is not in receipt and the public is getting it at the same time, that's one thing. We can't be in a position where, uh, I, I mean. It happened with the school start time thing. I remember that. It's not, <laughs> it's not okay that but we're conducting that, meetings like this. It has with, happened, so that's all I'm saying. Right, certainly don't disagree. I, I think best right. practice, they should be made available. But these will be posted tonight. Yes. With that, we have a motion on the table to approve the meeting agenda. All those in favor? You did, did that, right? We did that? We did We're that. good. Okay, so discussion item, Cardinal Stadium. Uh, I don't know, Dr. Jones, are you going to kick off? Actually, we'll start right out with the architect who's going to be presenting for us tonight with KGND, Russ Davison.
the number of 20 came up. And it's important to note that that's treating the, the activities of the field as their own. And that doesn't include the 13 spaces that are at the high school. So 20 would be the right amount to have in the proximity of Cardinal Field. Um, we looked at a lot of different building layouts uh, for the home and visitor side. Um, we also looked at options for connecting to the high school parking lot. And the, at the conclusion of the last meeting, the com committee, uh, many of whom are here tonight, unanimously voted for uh, option three for consideration of the Board of Ed to be implemented in part or in whole. And this is the drawing of uh, option three, uh, which, you know, again, here's the track and field, which is remaining unaltered at this point. Um, is the home site bleachers uh, with the buildings underneath, which you have seen before. The uh, preferred location for handicap parking is this location right here. The addition of a small entry or ticket kiosk, uh, the visitor side bleachers, uh, potential location for a visitor side building, <coughs> either here or potentially under the bleachers. And then it was talked about uh, in the future, the, you know, this would allow the existing tennis course to remain right here. You could put the handicap parking in, it wouldn't disturb any tennis courts. And then at some point, if you go forward uh, with the project, you could have a, a full connecting driveway to the high school parking lot, but that would require relocation uh, of the eight tennis courts. So that's the ultimate configuration that was described as option three to the committee, which everyone preferred, uh, basically said, find a way to get there. Um, so this shows the uh, uh, handicapped parking lot, which this, this portion of has 17 ADA spaces, the remainder has three, uh, some of the preferences to this was uh, you get out of your car and you have a sidewalk to go directly to either side of the bleachers and that handicapped individuals wouldn't be uh, getting out of their vehicle and going back into a drive lane uh, to get to a uh, to get to the event. Um, this works out really comfortably from a grading point of view and many people will remember that at one point that flat area was actually used for handicap parking earlier for, for Cardinal Stadium. So it's really just repurposing it. It does have a pile of soil on it that is not contaminated. It's been used as a storage area for soil. The visitor side bleachers got a lot of discussion. Um, I'm sorry this projector isn't uh, as clear as we would like, but there's a line that it's hard to see here that, that runs right through where I'm tracing with the pointer. That's the 100-foot um, wetlands regulated area. So the entire visitor's bleachers, including a portion of the track, are in the regulated, regulated area because of this water course. Um, so anything related to the visitor's bleachers, whether you just replace them, put a building underneath them, or even put a building off to the side, will be subject to wetlands review. Um, as well as the driveway to the high school and the relocation of the tennis courts. So the home bleachers and visitors bleachers are uh, much as described earlier. Um, you know, the large press box, the ramp edges, the stairs up either side. The visitors bleachers is, are also elevated with the same amount of ramp. So the front side of the visitors bleachers has always been proposed to be elevated and it matches the elevated side of the home bleachers. Again, they're both much closer to the field, so you're going to have better viewing angles, and handicapped individuals will be able to be up and elevated right next to uh, regular bleacher seats. Uh, with the addition of the idea of putting a building on the visitor side, was a proposed modification to the building under the home bleachers, which allowed us to expand the home team room uh, here to almost 1,400 feet and provide much needed storage underneath the other side. You still have the public toilet rooms, family toilet rooms, referees, first aid, um, small concession for mostly souvenirs because food will be done from food trucks and a storage area to support that. 
The smaller visitor center building, the standalone version, is proposed to be a 30 by 60 building. It has about an 800 square foot visitor's team room. Also has some public accessible toilets, um, as well as a toilet room that serves the team room. And one vehicle storage bay, which allows you to get some of the larger mowers and things uh, that are used at the field stored right there. Um, there's an alternative, you know, being discussed for putting the uh, building under the visitor side of bleachers. Some prefer this approach. Uh, this is the cross section of the visitor's bleachers with the front elevated. Um, it should be noted there's also some discussion about exactly where the visitor's bleachers is set, should be planned to allow for um, expansion of the track. Uh, at some point in the future, and that will be done no matter which version goes <coughs> forward. That's an easy thing to accommodate. But this was just a study done to see how a building fits under the visitor's bleachers. This is the line of gray, it does fade down, but the building, in order to fit under there, uh, would be submerged below grade, about five or six feet on this side, and about three or four feet on this side. So you cut an entrance in. Um, it shouldn't be an issue with the water table, but this is in a wetlands regulated area and that will be something the wetlands agency will want us to, uh, they, they, will, uh, they will want to see alternatives. So it's good that there's a couple different options on how that can be done and our suggestion would be that we uh, review that with wetlands to see which one uh, can be most easily approved. Uh, because there was a discussion of connecting the high school parking lot, uh, we had a, a lot of discussions about uh, you know, what's a firefighting access road, which needs to be 20 feet wide and 24 ton bridge. So if you're going to have a firefighting access road, you're getting into a, a real road. And then the discussion was, well, if it's 20 feet wide, that's really not adequate for two-way traffic. And the committee really felt that 24 was a reasonable minimum for a road. So that's what uh, was shown, and then the more we looked at connecting here or connecting here, we came back to what was in the original option B, which is connect to the drive lanes in the parking lot. You get some additional ADA parking in this case, uh, an area for the bus to drop off, and on the footprint of uh, some of the one and a half of the tennis courts, the idea to put a practice field there so you have an area for people to gather before a big event, or you can have a place for teams to stretch and practice uh, before taking on the contest field. Um, and just to revisit, this is a rendering uh, of the bleachers that I think you've seen before, but there's your elevated section. Um, you know, one of the reasons the stairs are here and the ramp is here is, is uh, the scope of this also involves replacing light fixtures but not the poles. So we have to work with the existing pole locations, which is which is okay, but the, you wouldn't put them there today if you were doing the bleachers. Um, and then the view from the back of the bleachers, you can see the small concession stand, the uh, full-service hydraulic elevator up to the walkway from the press box, and that this drive lane here would be restricted access. It's not a parking area. It's for delivering things. Um, and for getting food trucks in and out. Um, and there's bollards there to prevent the vehicles from interfering with pedestrians. Um, so uh, uh, we've been working hard on cost. We got feedback from the group on the cost of a bridge. This represents uh, yesterday's version uh, or today's version of costs. And um, you know, we don't have the full uh, spreadsheet that has every line item because it wouldn't be readable on the screen. Not that this is that readable either. But um, you, you may remember that when we were talking about what was originally <laughs> phase one, uh, it was about $6.6 .6 million, which didn't include the vi uh, a visitor's building, and it did, include, did not include a road or relocating the tennis courts. Then a version came up that was priced at around 10.6, and the one that you've just seen, total price is around 11.9. And the first part of that, uh, without the road and moving the tennis courts, would be 8.8 .8 million. Um, 
The 11.9 I know is a lot of money, but you may remember that uh, the full plan <coughs> after it was refined was 17.5. So this represents a significant downsizing from uh, the original option B that was proposed um, and approved by the board. So in researching the approvals process, um, we, we believe it might be worth considering a slightly different way of dividing the project. We want to talk about that a little bit. And that's what we're calling part one and part two. And the real difference here is moving the visitor side bleachers and the building for the visitors team rooms into part two. And that's really related to the fact that they're the only part of what had earlier been phase one that requires a wetlands approval. Um, and that uh, could have a significant impact on the amount of time it takes to get the initial uh, project going. And everyone, uh, I think everyone is completely unified on we need to get the home side bleachers replaced and back in service as soon as possible and the work that's related to it. So this proposal to sort of split things a little differently is uh, for that uh, effect. Um, and it, it's also important to note that you can ask for approvals for a project and you don't, or you aren't mandated to build it. A wetlands approval, for example, is valid for five years. So if you, if you went ahead and got things approved, like the driveway to the high school is part of that, you don't have to ask for funding for it, and you don't have to build it right away. Uh, but whether you um, whether you ask for funding or not, if it's anticipated, Wetlands is going to want to review it as a single project. So this is just a list of a summary list of the approvals for the different parts of the project. So for part one, you would need the municipal approval application because you're asking for funding. You need a site plan approval from planning and zoning. Because you're at FAR limited at the high school, you're going to need a zoning variance for the press box and for the buildings underneath the bleachers. Um, you have a very minor change of use for the post road entry exit, so there will be a discussion with Connecticut DOT on that. Uh, we don't expect that to be a big issue. There's already been some initial discussions with them. You're basically saying it's going to be for deliveries and for handicapped parking only which is exactly what that entry exit has been used for in the past. So there shouldn't be any big deal there. Also, all the work proposed in part one uh, does not impact areas where they're suspected to have contaminated soils. Um, and of course, you'll still need a building permit. You're building buildings. Part two, uh, you'll need the municipal improvement because you're going to ask for some portion of that funding, or if not all of it. You'll still need a site plan approval. You'll still need a zoning variance. But the next three are really different. You'll need the in, you'll need the wetlands review and approval. And it's important to note that you can't do a wetlands review in pieces. It's an environmental impact, and this is typical with any environmental review. You cannot segment it. They want to view it as a whole. So all the work with, that's anticipated within the regulated area should be part of one application to wetlands. Um, you also would need to deal with the significant change of use for the post road entry exit with Connecticut DOT because this would include the driveway and that's likely to be a longer process than just a different agency. And also important is because of the bridge location near the water course, this will impact an area that's suspected to have contaminated soils. So really, for, and of course you need a building permit. And so it's really because of those three approvals there in red on the right that we proposed moving uh, the visitor's bleachers and the visitor's building to that side so that we don't, um, um, so this is just a graphic depiction of that that shows the blue line here. So this, Everything in this area would be part one, which is the simpler part to approve. 
and everything within the wetlands regulated area um, would be part two. And again, you can go for these two approvals simultaneously. We met with planning. You're not going to hide from uh, part one from part two. You're going to show them the whole thing, but you're just going to physically separate the applications. And it's our understanding that that's been discussed and planning um, has no issue with that. But wetlands, understandably, really needs to look at everything with the regulated area of the wetlands at one time. Even if you separate them, they're going to make you join them. <coughs> so, uh, just parsing the budgets just a little differently because we move the visitors' bleachers and then the visitors' um, building, whichever version that is, to the part two. Uh, that 8.8 .8 would then have 7.6 in part one. And if you ask for the full funding for part two, it would be 4.3. But if you ask uh, for only the visitors' bleachers and the visitors' side, it would be 1.2. So it's just dividing the numbers a little differently. It's still 8.8 .8 for the work that you wanted this committee to study. Um, so the possible path forward by that plan, if, if you so decide, would be to prepare two separate and independent applications for part one and part two, but start them both at the same time. It would be really nice if they ended at the same time, um, but which is which is possible. It's just not as likely. Uh, the real advantage is this keeps the approvals related to replacing the failed bleachers, part one, as simple as possible to expedite the work. And that's really the only, that's your big advantage. And it consolidates the more challenging approvals into the part two approvals, which is wetlands, traffic, and uh, hopefully no, but the, the work uh, related to contaminated soils, if there are any. Uh, the disadvantages of breaking them into two is it's less efficient than a single set of approvals from a time and money perspective. And it could mean that the visitor side improvements um, occur later, resulting in a longer disruption period uh, to the field. Um, but you know, the other side of that is maybe the other stuff wouldn't start as soon um, if, if you put them together. So there's a lot of next steps. Obviously, uh, the board needs to select a design approach and an implementation plan. There's still work to be done on the drawings and specifications to get them, uh, especially the site work, to get them up to about 90% complete. Then you need to prepare and submit the applications start the MI process to gain approval of funding. You meet with the boards and officials to advance applications. And um, I think the committee uh, did include people from DPW. Um, and you know, we've met with wetlands and um, planning. So there's nobody in town hall who's unaware of this project at this point. Um, there's usually some revisions and updates to documents required to advance the process. And then you finalize drawings and get them to bid. Uh, periodically, we would review this with the Board of Edit leadership, including updating budgets. And then once approvals are final, you issue, issue it for bids and uh, do the construction. Um, the bleachers and the buildings and most of the work in part one, um, I would remind the board, you've already commissioned up to 60% design. So that is really well advanced, and uh, we, are, uh, we are prepared to pick it up right where it left off and get part one going very quickly. That's really uh, our presentation. Um, I'm happy to take questions. Jeff. Russ, I thought that was a great presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, I think it mostly reflects what the committee has discussed over the last two meetings. I know you've been at this for a long time. Uh, I have uh, uh, joined it only a short while ago, so uh, I don't have the history you have, but certainly saw sort of the uh, committee work together on getting suggestions on how to advance this. The few questions I had looking at your presentation, you answered in your presentation, so I do appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I guess what the questions were, were uh, in our discussions, we talked about uh, having a phase uh, one and two, or we'll say, the, both the home bleachers 
and the visitor's bleachers to be one separate project and possibly have the road another separate project. But you pointed out clearly why the, uh, the uh, visitor's uh, bleachers should be within the same project as the road because of the wetlands issues. Right. So that made clarity because I, I know the rest of the committee, we didn't discuss that. That was new information from So it's great. Well, thanks we for that. We went to town hall because we wanted to come here really knowing the path forward and you cannot divide a wetlands application. Which makes sense, which is, which is why we should tie it together. Yeah. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, hopefully that will satisfy, uh, uh, satisfy the, the committee and uh, certainly satisfies, uh, for, satisfies me as long as we separate the two projects as you suggest. That's the main interest. Uh, uh, the main points I would like to emphasize because I don't think we should hold back uh, one uh, to uh, or delay uh, uh, for the other one to equally work them and work them to moving forward hard. So, yeah. thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Sure. But Joe, I'm Joe. I'm a little confused by what you said. Um, there's part one that includes part of the construction of this road. It's essentially a parking lot. It's like the first half of the road, right? <coughs> No, I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to just be clear what the committee... Well, you ask a question. I'll answer what question. the committee the answer, on. The answer to your question was that was the best place to put the handicapped parking. So the committee did say build that. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so they said build the first part of the road. No, that's, they, that's, they, that's, they, that's they right. said build handicapped parking. Yeah, but the, okay, but the way that got implemented is build the first half of the road, right? Yeah, no, no. no, that's not, that, not so accurate I, at all. I'm sorry, maybe I'm confused. The road is in two parts, right? There's the part that goes out to the, right? Which is build that part now, right? Which makes a lot of sense, right? Can you can you go back to your bigger chart? Maybe Russ, you can describe right? and the then difference the, between the driveway the, and a road. I'm sorry, you're saying, Russ, you've always planned this road, right? And at one point it had a circle, a bus circle. It's been... There's been 50 incarnations of that thing, right? But now we're essentially back where we started, right? Which is directly from the parking lot, relocate the tennis courts, build a road out to the post road, right? That's what that is, right? Yep. And it, but it says, in part one, build the half to the left, and in part two, build the half to the right. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so the part to the left is the handicapped part. Right, and, and, the, and part of the road, right? It, it, it has a driveway. It's yeah, okay. Configured yes. just the way the high school parking lot is okay. configured. So, it's, so this kind of moves the road along a little bit. A right? little bit, but yeah. allows What we're trying to do is get yeah. a way to get good quality handicap parking mm -hmm. near the fields yeah. and allow you to do the next part if you want to mm -hmm. without unbuilding it. Yeah, right, great. We're spending any dollar twice. Okay, so my question to Joe was, Joe, the committee fully supports this, is that right? The this committee? being the handicap parking, yes. Well, did they vote on part one and part two as Russ proposed? or? The only difference that, that the committee changed is, is the idea of moving the visitor's bleachers and the visitor's building to part two because we didn't have the information about the wetlands approval. Oh, okay. Okay. Otherwise, that's exactly what the committee. I see a lot of they, they had in, they had in their voted plan. I guess is what you're saying. They had part one plus the visitor bleachers and the visitor room. Yes. Okay, and you've suggested slicing that up a little bit differently. Right. Just for all the reasons you've articulated. Yes. That's all. Okay. That's really the only thing new for the committee for tonight is. A slightly different way of parsing the two the two parts of the Miss Downey. Because just to clarify what Peter was saying, so it basically the plan of what to ultimately do in a perfect world is what the committee voted on, and it's just a question of the staging for various approvals no and what's needed and finances, correct? Sure. We're not gonna stage it though. What? what? We don't want to stage There's it. Microphones. You gotta no, I mean that. staging from a, an orderly fashion of because we have to, if we have to get wetlands approval for a portion of the project to do the portion that doesn't require the wetlands first. Yeah, that's correct. We just didn't, we don't want to stage it. We want to move both simultaneously. I don't care how they have to 
part right, of with the process. understanding that some of it's going to take longer just because of the processes. That's correct. Well, quite honestly, actually doing it the way you propose, Russ, leaves the visitor bleachers in place so that you, if you have the home bleachers out of order, you still have the visitor bleachers to use for a while. Right. Our, our rough estimate is they have at least five years of useful life. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hirsch. Go ahead. Um, just, well, I, <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's a little different. Um, in terms of timing, if you wanted to talk a little bit in an ideal world, knowing that it's not always an ideal world, that if, the, if we vote next Thursday night to go ahead, what is the timing sequence you would foresee optimistically, pessimistically, realistically? You, know, you can give us all. Um, so much of this depends on planning and zoning and the MI process uh, that um, we would want to do a little bit more homework with them. And, and um, you know, a motivated uh, group of people who want you to replace your bleachers fast. There's no reason why this couldn't happen um, spring, summer. If we get tied up in a lot of things with the part one, um, you're not gonna wanna take them out in the fall. Um, so uh, that's why we, we do believe time is of the essence and we wanted to try and streamline that part one as much as possible so you get new bleachers in place. The, the buildings, would, you know, even if, if the buildings are designed, the buildings, you should never expect to have the buildings fully functional for September. But bleachers are prefabricated, and uh, uh, if, if everybody was really working together and cooperating, that would be our goal, because this has been going on uh, for a while. Ms. Hirsch. So I know that... Yeah, I'm really loud, sorry. I know there's been a lot of discussion back and forth about the um, secondary egress to and from our school. I know it's slightly different on this plan. So I just, you mentioned having had brief discussions, I think, with the DOT. For this plan to do, do this, is it, th that secondary access road is not wide enough to have two-way traffic, is it? It is. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's okay. Just, it's just like the drive lanes in the high school. It's, and it, you know, we, we as a group decided to call it a driveway. It's not, it's not a road, it's a driveway. Uh, it has parking on the side. It's just like the drive lanes in the high school parking lot. Okay. But uh, it is important that you have a minimum of 20 feet, and then 24 really allows two-way traffic, and the committee felt if it's worth doing it 20, it's worth doing it 24. So the question that I had was, I, we've, I know we've, well, I had asked uh, Tony, who I know was going to reach out to you um, about this, but, you know, have we approached the state as to what their thoughts would be to give us access to the post road? And if so, have they given us any indication as to what, it, yeah. what they would allow? We, and if not, you know. Our team has, um, uh, and your team has. So you've hired a civil engineering firm to do a traffic study, uh, independent of our work. And uh, coincidentally, that's the same civil engineer working with us on the Cardinal Stadium project. They, t they talk to DOT. Uh, it's important to note that this is an existing curb cut. We're not proposing a new opening to, to post road. You have this now. Um, it's always been thought of as o only being a right turn in and right turn out. Um, in a Connecticut DOT, like most regulatory agencies, will not give you any determination until you give them a full and detailed application. But the initial discussion was, I don't see why we wouldn't let you continue to use a curb cut you have for a reasonable purpose. Ms. Stowe. Oh, okay. Am I good, all right? Okay. Um, I appreciate, Russ, that you pointed out what we had voted on a while ago with option B because this sort of budget creep was bothersome to me initially when I saw the 6-6 six, six to 10-6 to 11 Four as of yesterday and now 11 9. Um, but you did, it was good to remind us that at one point we had voted on 17. Like, and, and even when you had the 6 6, there was a f second phase to that that's not shown on, on the So, screen. But the total, right, is now 11.9 right. versus 17. Right. So what do, what's the 5 million difference? The buildings are a lot smaller, it's been a lot of downsizing. 
Um, there's not the big turnaround circle. We're not doing a lot of rock removal. We're leaving a lot of the existing topography around the field undisturbed. A lot of people like it. They sit on it. Like, it's part of the character. So the whole thing has been scaled back a little bit because yeah. uh, everyone's concerned about funding. Yeah, it's no. A lot. It's a huge difference, and I think we should, like, I think it's really important that you pointed that out, because otherwise if you look at this, you sort of, at least mine's always a little bit I was just going to say, I mean, I've been on the committee for 42 months. There was also a $35 million. Oh, yeah, no, I remember, I remember voting on a parkway, um, and this was sort of the, option B was the middle of the road at the time. Right, and there was also, there was a need that was asked for by the teacher committee person that was on the original committee who wanted more educational space. So we actually took out educational space because we were asked to by the BET and the Board of Ed, but there was a second, um, a second story on the entry, entryway that had a complete workout and rehabilitation area for um, athletes and we could also use, because there's a workout room that's the size of a classroom, I don't know if you've seen that, by the little ballet bar mm -hmm. at the high school. And so they were asking for more ed space. But I think that they've been working on using the home side when it's not used by Six or eighty football players is a large size for some educational space and other things. Is that right, Russ? I, I don't know what the current plan is for team training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the committee to be here, Peter. Miss Kowalski. <coughs> Sorry. So, with the location of that um, egress, and that, is that next to just for? So I have the concept in my mind. Is that near the the bus stop that's yeah. on the road? And then. Has there been any discussion with the Connecticut DOT regarding the need for possibly having to put in a, another traffic light? I know that that's been raised in a prior discussions that another egress onto Post Road would re potentially require another traffic light, which everyone is uh, not for. At least that was the opinion that was expressed. Um, I don't think anybody's for it, so no, it wasn't discussed with DOT. There's a uh a number of lights right there that would, really would not work. So that's why right turn in, right turn out is the best option. And that's the proposal. The proposal would be that we would put in front of DOT is right in, right out, and right. that's it. Their concern generally is that people don't follow that. You have to put something yeah, so you have to do a what they call a pork chop shaped island mm -hmm. to force them to go to the right. Uh, but but it's a very wide road, so you can still turn in it if you disobey. But, uh, that's part of the process, and you know, right turn in, right turn out, as we all know, is allowed in many places. It would work there. So just to understand, with that space during a non-stadium event, is it going to be open or closed for parking? Like if we're not, if it's not like on just a regular school day. I mean, I guess that's part of the question, right? I think that's something that has to get worked out probably with DOT. Right. If you're looking at it for emergency access only, if you're using it for game day, if you're using it for school parking. Um, Joe, the committee, I'm going to ask you because you're our representative, so I hope you will speak for the committee to the board. Right. Um, did the committee vote this whole plan with all of these elements in it? I mean, did you guys, at your last committee meeting, because you're saying we took a vote, they took a vote, and I heard it was unanimous for this entire plan this way with all these parts in it. Is that correct? That's correct. And I said after we voted on that that we tried to separate the two projects because there's still a lot of debate to be held or had uh, regarding the road and now what is the wetlands project uh, of the visitor side bleachers. But so there's no debate in the committee about that, right? No because the committee is saying, that's what I'm trying to get clear, the committee is saying we are asking the BOE, the full board, you're asking as our, your committee, unanimously is saying please build that full road when you're done with this project. The, uh, what is, separating the two projects, I'm supporting uh, voting positively for phase one, which is project number one, and I truly believe there's a lot of debate yet to be had on what is uh, project two. Uh, so I would suggest, my suggestion to the board is that we still have a lot of dialogue to be held 
uh, regarding the uh, uh, second phase. I'm I'm on a different co I'm on a different question. Okay, I'm sorry. That's right. It's always hard to follow you. There's scope here for phase w part one, and there's scope for part two, right? It right says on. do these things in part two and do these things in part one. Right, right. Together, it's the whole project. You put those two things together, it's the whole project. Oh, you correct. Agree? Yes. Uh, yes is the answer. So my question was, did the committee vote and is unanimously and is recommending to the board, regardless of what the sequencing is, do right. everything that's in part one and do everything that's in part two? Yes. yes. The vote was in support of the plan. Uh, okay. The dis discussion after that was that uh, we're going to discuss it amongst the board uh, to break up the two projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I just want to acknowledge the members of the committee that are that are here or who have participated. Uh, thank you for your hard work. I know we, we called on you to kind of clean up what uh, would have been going on for a long time. I also want to thank Chief Heavey for coming out tonight. And I know you probably have somewhere else that you'd rather be. If there's anything you want to add, I'd, I'd let you do it now. So we've got a microphone. Thanks. Um, again, we had our uh, physical security uh, personnel look at it, our traffic people look at it, and we've talked to the art, you know, again, we're just seeing the last final part of this, but we think that it'll be okay, and, and uh, we're work, we'll again work with what's required to provide the DOT, con DOT, with the information they need from us, and then of course, you know, setting it up to uh, to work. So uh, again, we, we we're, our, our, one of our concerns was parking adjacent to the home uh, Stadium and that was that was taken out of this final plan and that was one of the major concerns our physical security experts had So um, with us, we don't really have any uh, any if issues with uh, with the plan I don't know if anybody has any questions for the for the police part of it, but um, again, this will add a lot more improved security safety to the, An event at the stadium once yeah. it's, it's complete. So that's that's a, a positive for from us Miss Joe so just to be clear, since there's like a thousand people from the BET here, um, we are asking for 7.6 or 8.8 .8 right now. Number one is my first question. Less the 3.9 that we already have in there. Yes? Based on, based on the charge to the committee, you asked the committee to study how to get everything in place, including the visitor's bleachers and a visitor's side building. So I believe your request would be for a total of 8.8 .8 in two parts. 8.8 in two parts. So then we are fine with our current request and our 2021 submitted budget plan. I would also point out if you don't want to ask for permission for the road and moving the test courts, we just really need to analyze it for the purposes of the wetlands approval. Right. You don't have to build it. But we're going to have to analyze its impact on the wetlands to get anything done within the regulated area. Um, you can talk about how that should be played. So I guess let me let me see if I can spit this back at you to make sure I understand. The recommendation is to follow this plan, but using the phases you suggest, which is. Home visitor, home home and visitor side separately. The visitor side would include the potential road back over to the high school, with the idea that while you may start both at start the application process at once, technically there are two different applications. So, so planning and zoning would be able to move on the home side work, uh, and the other work would be pending while we wait for. Uh, in the wetlands while we wait for Connecticut DOT or whatever else we might need. Exactly. Usually you submit to planning and zoning and they do an initial review and they say, okay, you're going to get a referral here, you're going to get a referral there, and when you have those, you come back. Um, and our concern is with wetlands in the part one, the replacement of the bleachers is tied up for a wetlands impact that has nothing to do with it. Um, right, so you do that one separately. Exactly. Right. Right, but the idea is to, to start them simultaneously, but they will work on their own tracks. Yeah. Okay. Ms. Kowalski. They don't have to be. But, I mean, the board said in their charge that you wanted to get the visitor side bleachers done at the same time, so that's what we're responding to. 
And, and I think the, the other thing we talked about, though, was you go down the road of making sure you're going to get it approved by DOT. So before you really spend true money starting to do work, you would go and have those conversations to know that you'd be able to move forward with phase two. And that's why you start the waterways conversation, the inland wetlands conversation as well. Right, but even if you weren't able to put the road in, it's still the best place for the handicapped parking. So you, right. no harm, no foul. You put in excellent handicapped parking, which you need for an event. You have thousands of people out there. Right. Ms. Kowalski? So, Peter, just to clarify on your part, though, we're going to need DOT approval for phase one because you're still going to have that egress for well, phase you know, one. We, we need to get rid of the traffic uh, people and the DOT. I think that as a courtesy, you should tell them what's going on, but you're basically restoring a use that had been there earlier in part one, which is emergency access, which is where it is now, and there used to be handicapped parking on the ground at the bottom. So I think Connecticut DOT is saying, so you're going to tell me that you have an existing driveway that you want to continue to use the way you used to use it. But, and I think that's about all the discussion will be, because there's no new modifications proposed to it. In the part two, I think you need to do a traffic flow analysis. You have to look at the Port Jeff Island thing. You're going to have to analyze the post-road traffic. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a thoughtful, more normal process when, whenever you change your traffic pattern, which is likely to take some time. Ms. Hirsch. So the plan is as suggested here, part one, part two, will expedite actually getting this all taken care of because I mean we've been talking about this for a long time and definitely I mean we've heard from the public it needs to be done. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that it's also important to note that the most traffic we have coming in and out of the stadium is for football games. Um, most of the other teams that play in the stadium during the season, you're not going to have as much uh, traffic. I mean, do you see that that's going to be a concern? Would we still be able to use the stadium? Not, you know, if, if we're doing some of the work, would we, the students will still be able to use the field for any of the games if we have one side of the bleachers open versus the other? Yeah, the field and track should be able to be fully utilized throughout the course of this. So splitting it as this way would actually still allow for use. That's right. Other discussion from the board? I just want to turn to the committee. I don't know if there's anything anybody wants to add. Um, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, oh. It's on. It's on. It's on before. I'd like to add that uh, the committee did see this plan beforehand, but we didn't see it broken into two parts. So this is the first time we're actually right. we're seeing this as a, a two-part um, project. I think it's a good idea because we need to get those uh, bleachers done. We're going to have another group of kids go through the high school without having the use of, of, uh, of a quality uh, stadium. And so in order to get that done faster, I think, you know, as Russ pointed out, go to wetlands, you know, that's going to take a little bit longer. We need to start with the project, the home side field, and get it done and then focus on getting a road or a driveway or whatever you want to call it, a lane, uh, on that site, on our site, because, you know, folks, I'm living with 2,850 students every day, and if we ever have to uh, leave that building in a hurry, there's only uh, two ways out, okay? We need a third way out. So I don't want us to lose focus on the, on the road, but... I think this is a, a, a good plan to go forward with. And I also think that where the handicapped parking is on this plan, we've had that for years before um, we dumped all that dirt there for uh, the clean dirt there for the, the possible remediation of the field. So that was always used as, uh, as parking um, for football <coughs> games anyway. So. I just want to ensure that we get our kids into that stadium, into that, onto the, into those uh, bleachers as soon as we can. And Russ, I have a question. If we're not going to work on the visitors' bleachers simultaneously, um, then where would the other team 
not that I care about the other team that much, but <laughs> where would the other team's dressing room be if we don't have, if we're just designing the home side for our team? Russ, can I jump in a second on that one? Where is it now? <laughs> well, I, I understand that, Joe, but I, you know, so. Well, there, there is a storage room in the uh, building under the home site bleachers that could be temporarily used for the visitors, uh, if need be. And it's not uncommon that you see tents used. So if you have a level spot, you could, if you so accommodate it, uh, put a tent up for them. Mr. Chair. Um, Russ, can you talk about the, uh, now I'm into the details. I, I, I'm sorry, I feel like Groundhog Day with this. This is almost where we were last June. Now we've burned another seven months on this thing, and we're back where we started again. You know, um, <laughs> the, the lighting carriages, we're under a, uh, a stipulated agreement to take the lighting carriages up and down, and we're not doing that right now, so we're out of legal compliance. How, how's that going to be addressed when we put Our up the new ones? Our to replace the fixtures with fixtures that can go up and down. So you're comfortable we have that? Because it looked like on that diagram they looked very fixed. Yeah, well, that's the rendering. Okay, so, yeah. but the but did we, yeah, we, we budget? Go up and down, and that's what it's been budgeted. Oh, perfect. 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 Okay, I, I'm just going to tell my colleagues on the board. Maybe I've just been doing this too long. I've been serving in town government now 16 years. I spent a lot of time in this room with the RTM. Um, I'm in full support of let's go do part one. I think it's a really bad idea to go after part two at the same time. Because whether you like it or not, we can live in our little world where in our heads uh, those two things are like separate. But when it goes to the BET, it goes to the town, it goes to the RTM, it goes to all these other things, uh, trust me, those two things are going to be 100% linked. And I am frustrated with this whole thing because uh, I lived through MISA. MISA was supposed to happen for, I don't know, less than 20 million bucks and it was supposed to happen in three years. That didn't happen. All right, It went on and on and on and in the end it cost double the amount. Now, I don't think that will happen here. But I, I, I lived through that. There's uh, Where's Laura Erickson? With the scars on her back on that, a bunch of other people who, who lived through that. It, the pack is beautiful and it got built. But it took a really, really long time. And the lesson I take away from that is uh, don't try to eat the whole turkey at once. Um, put it into bite-sized meals, um, and let's try to get things done in pieces that we can actually get done. Um, I love this with part one. It's almost back where we started, but it's a more refined plan, and it has better alignment. It costs a bunch more, to Ms. Stowe's point. I'm a little curious how we went from four to almost double the cost, and we didn't really change the scope that much. But I, I, I'm fine with it, what it is. I would hope the board would just take that up, uh, approve that, push that project forward, get the home side bleachers built with the team rooms underneath, with the handicapped parking, and let's go to town on that. Let's go through each of the bodies that we need to get approved. We clearly need to disclose to all these other parties that this is our grand plan. But uh, the idea of doing these things simultaneously, you're essentially, this, we can live in fantasy land that we're only asking for eight million and we're really not asking for this other money, we're just asking for the planning money for it and so on and so forth. When it gets to these other bodies, I promise you, they won't see phase one and phase two anymore. They're just gonna see one big giant project and one big giant number. So. Um, I'd like to be wrong, because I'd love to get all of this done, um, but based on my experience, I don't think I am wrong with this. So um, I'm glad it's here. Thank you to the committee for, you know, retreading the earth again. Um, but, you know, I'd like to go get this done. I, I have ringing in my ears. I'm, I'm fascinated 
was my, with uh, my good friend, the headmaster. He was begging us less than 12 months ago, uh, could you just build, rebuild bleachers and get it done right away? Right? And I, I haven't forgotten that. And I'm kind of on the, let's go get these bleachers built with the team rooms underneath, and the GAF is at the table, hunky fat. You know, we get handicapped parking, which we don't really have. That's overdue. Let's just go get that done. And then whatever comes after that is whatever comes after that, is kind of how I'm looking at it. Just my own view. Ms. Hirsch, and then I was just going to point out that we had members of all the town bodies participatory on that committee. So I assume that they added their points of view when there was in discussion as to part one, part two, and the funding, um, and they agreed on the overall idea of the project, at least the committee members, but they are representative of all the town body. Chief Hubie. Right, I, I wanted to say this before uh, Mr. Shear responded with the breakup, and I don't want, so I don't want to feel like I'm competing with that, but I think this, there's a strong safety concern to consider the, the connection to the back road to the sure. parking lot sure. and uh, again we have looked at things to address the school safety concerns for a long time I only have 34 years I, I got even less than uh, Ralph does but um, <laughs> but I think looking at that we do we do have to look at um, you know how much longer do we have to wait do we have by separating in another year um, you know I'll, I'll be retired probably by the time it, it, it gets in if we keep spreading it out but I think um, it's a, it's a pretty well set up plan for considering with my experience with Connecticut DOT and some of the other approval agencies it's going to take some time for step two phase two to get going so we get phase Sorry, one going I quite hear you. <laughs> it's my own phone so, that's all thank you any other discussion Ms. Downey I don't know if tonight's the right night to ask about it, but just we had talked about the Greenwich Athletic Foundation, had talked about making a pledge. I don't know, Joe, if there were discussions as part of that process, whether that's still part of the analysis, whether that pledge is still up out there. I think that would be helpful, even if you don't know tonight, if we could find out before our meeting on the 16th. If Mr. Burton is here, he was actually the GAF member of the committee, and if you'd like to step up to the microphone, sir, we'd sure. love to hear from oh, you. Good man. <laughs> Excellent. All right. I'm a little under the weather, so I'll keep this brief. Uh, no, I think we're generally, and again, there's a lot of different voices in that room, we're generally supportive of this plan. We do share a lot of the concerns of the time delay. I think the time is the most precious thing that Ralph brought up. We don't want to see another class or two go through this. So decoupling the plan we thought made a lot of sense, but we are in support of the road. We, we just think, or the driveway, we just want this to bog down the stadium project. In terms of financial support, that has not changed. I think we are very supportive and we would love, again, we were very worrisome about going to public without a plan that did not have a definitive time frame by, po by hopefully segregating these two projects and we have a for time frame, we can go to the public so raising money. So we are, excuse me, uh, we, we have committed to at least a million dollars. Thank you. No, and again, this is long overdue, and we're fully supportive of this. We just wanted to get this thing done and move on to the next project because there's many more things to get done. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. All right, other discussion from the board? Committee members, hearing on, um, hearing of their sign-up sheets out in the uh, lobby. And again, the board is going to take this up for an action item at our meeting on Thursday, January 16th. Ms. Kowalski is going to check me on the calendar. All right, 16th? Okay, 16th. 16th, you bring this up? Yeah. Sure. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. All right. So we're going to move on to the next portion of our agenda, which is public comments. Uh, oh, yes. I think Stephanie 
Oh, Steph. One quick question or a comment. Uh, Laura Erickson, also from BET, did participate on this committee. So to Peter's point, to Mr. Scherer's point, that um, about funding and how it be done and splitting it up, the intention was that it would go through as one, and whether they were doing it simultaneously or there would be delay on the side due to wetlands and or DOT for the driveway, that the BET would support doing it as a plan, so part one, part two. So regardless of how it looks like it was broken up, our discussions during that committee, it was that BET would be supportive of simultaneously doing that. So that is something we want to note that, you know, that is what your concern is, and that is the reason why we feel it's very important for various reasons to move forward on both fronts at the same time. If we're not believing that obviously on the stadium side that we'll have any problem or hiccup, but we'd hate to be waiting for this to be done to then start the other when the access, the driveway is very important as well. That's just the point we wanted to make sure you knew. Thank you. All right, so with that, we're going to move on to our public comments. Speakers get three minutes. You'll give a 30-second warning. We ask that you adhere to the three minutes. Um, so first up, uh, Maureen Bonanno and Terry LaMancha. Followed by, and I'm going to mispronounce the uh, name, I think it's Ernie. And I can't read the last name because I didn't put my glasses on. Hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Um, as the Greenwich High School PTA continues to support this long overdue and much needed improvement to make Cardinal Stadium a more inviting, safe, and accessible facility for our student athletes, parents, and visitors. ADA accessibility is essential. For families, friends, relatives with disabilities, there should be no barriers to having them attend events at the stadium. Also, safety is essential. Proper emergency access should be constructed for the safety of all those who attend the events at the stadium as well as for the safety of our students on a daily basis, given the size of the school. We have also heard from many of our parents that the lack of cell phone service and Wi-Fi service in the parking lots and fields is a huge safety issue. We hope you will address this concern as well. This is something that we haven't heard discussed, but it's been very on the foremost of our parents' minds, so we really encourage you to maybe, one parent actually said, put it in the, um, in the bleachers or somewhere, which is cell phone uh, tower or something. I don't know how that works, but anyway. We continue to, uh, or we support the proposed option uh, presented by KG and D architects and uh, supported by the committee. The proposed option seems to meet uh, all of the goals of the project. And to help the project move forward as swiftly as possible, splitting the project into two parts makes sense. Uh, as long as we proceed with part two in a timely manner. Uh, thank you again for the opportunity to speak, and we look forward to seeing the Cardinal Stadium project move forward. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, I'm having a hard time reading this. Ernie Shermer, maybe? That's correct. Thank you. I'm waiting on my new glasses. It's not your writing, it's my glasses. Thank you. My name is Ernie Shermer. I'm a District 8 fellow from Costco, but I'm a very active personal fitness user of Greenwich High School facilities, track and tennis, and also make a point anywhere I go in Greenwich, five miles or less, if possible, if it doesn't rain cats and dogs, I go by bike. I'd just like to make some comments, but maybe those gentlemen can also provide a couple of answers right away. Uh, number one point. This outlay, outline does not really convince me well enough about traffic circulation. Where's the quick drop-off or pick-off area? I have a big concern that the AEA area might be used as a quick drop-off or pick-up thing. That's not the idea, but we should really encourage that in the days of Uber, Lyft, Miniman, Shuttle, and these type of things that we can improve the flow. Maybe that's part of 2B or so, but I'm missing that point. And I think it's a fair and a big one because quick in and quick out is a very much demanded feature in Greenwich. Number two, um, I see no biking lanes and I see no biking parking. And I think going to a sports facility with bikes will make a lot of sense in 2020, the next 10 years. Number three, eight tennis courts will be replaced. I'd like to know how long will that take and when will they be taken out and then they're back. Could that be answered by the way, please? <coughs> Sorry, this is comment. You can talk to him afterwards. Okay. And then 
in that respect, I'm a bit concerned the tennis courts going more to like water and so on, that this could be solid ground issues. I like the Greenwich High School courts because they're the best in town. Amazingly enough, they're best maintained, but amazingly enough, they're really correctly flat and they don't paddle up like most other courts we have in town. So it should be built right from the beginning, but we're not going to have great tennis courts and that will again be an impact on quality. Number four, public restrooms. I just wonder how that's going to work because as a tennis player and given my age, uh, it's nice to have public restrooms and we don't want to go into the school buildings because we don't belong there. So in a way, I'd like to see that the public restrooms remain available in a reasonable way when all the facilities can be used, track and tennis courts. And number five, and that's probably project 4B, my understanding is that the tracks are not 400 meters long, but a different length. So if we talk about cardinal field improvement, maybe we can get correct common big length so that 30 seconds. 400 meter distance. But most importantly, everybody involved, I want to thank for everyone's contribution and hard work on this and pressing forward. So thank you so much. Thank you. The next speaker is Rick Lowe, followed by Brian Peldunas. Hi there, my name is uh, Rick Lowe, I live in Old Greenwich. I'm a member of the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, and I'm also on the uh, Hamill Rank Reconstruction Committee. Um, the way this option has laid out is great. Um, it matches tennis court configuration from an earlier, uh, from an earlier version I saw. Um, when we get to rebuilding Hamill Rank, it's going to solve a big problem. The current rink is out of code in many ways. Um, the facility is behind the times. But one thing will not be solved, and that is if we don't have enough ice time at that rink to satisfy the demand. So, on an earlier plan, the tennis courts were configured, and there was actually an outline drawn that said ice hockey rink or skating rink at one point in time. Um, I urge you to, in this lower left-hand corner, consider building the courts in that manner so that you could use it for multi-purpose. It could be turf inside a bubble, but the technology exists today that during the winter sports season, you could have the high school teams practicing here, which would open up a lot of ice time at Hamel Rink for other users. Um, when those other users came, they would be paying probably a lot more for ice time than the high school teams are now. So it's a revenue add uh, at the end of the day for the town. Um, I think that's it. Uh, I graduated from the building in 1971 with Ralph. Uh, three, three of my kids went through there. Um, and since I'm on the Parks and Rec Board, one other thing we need in town is a full-size baseball field with lights. Please, someday. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next up, Brian Paldunas, followed by Ashley Cole. I think. Uh, good evening, Superintendent Jones, Chairman Bernstein, members of the board, uh, parents, and the community. <coughs> Excuse me. My name is Brian Paldunas, first vice president of PTA Council. Substituting for Cricket Diamond. I'd like to say Cricket's in the Caribbean, sunning herself, but in reality, she's got the flu. So she sent her regards, and, but not her germs. Um, PTA Council has consistently ad advocated for restrooms, changing facilities, and ADA accessibility for all stadium facilities, including parking, bleachers, restrooms, and press box. And we are happy to see these elements included in this proposal. Uh, we continue to support the full second daily use means of egress to the post road from the Greenwich High School campus. Uh, we view this as necessary to improve traffic flow and to improve security and life safety for the students and for the surrounding neighbors. Um, you have to bear with me here. I added this about 10 times while I was sitting there. We are encouraged to see that this is contemplated in the proposal, but it sounds like there's a lot of work still to be done to make that a reality. Uh, we would be concerned if there is anything in the plan as approved that would preclude a daily use second access. Um, 
We recognize and encourage the need for the involvement of all impacted parties in this in a plan, including the neighbors on both sides of the post road. Uh, as highlighted in the committee's meeting meetings, uh, December 5th minutes. So there's a recognition already there by the committee that uh, the outreach to the neighbors needs to be done. We thank everyone for their involvement and thank you. Thank you. All right, next up is Ashley Cole, followed by Elizabeth Dempsey. Hi there, I'm Ashley Cole, and I live at 11 Hillside. Many of you had signs in my yard. And there's my neighbor, Elizabeth Dempsey, and we helped start the Selectman's Committee for Traffic Safety on Hillside Road. If you've driven down Hillside Road, you know what we're talking about. This study, which was actually required by law by the MISA variance many years ago, was only recently completed. And this study should be released in the next few weeks. It details many of the safety issues present on the Hillside Road. Every day, neighbors and students suffer from safety and quality of life issues because we have a school that supports 3,000 people and only one form of egress. I'd also like to give a shout out to Chief Heavey. He was on our committee and his fine policemen, but they can't patrol Hillside Road 24 7. We insist as neighbors on a second egress for Greenwich High School for the benefit and safety of this community, the neighbors, the students, and indeed the entire town. Many years ago, when GHS was created, these properties were taken by eminent domain, and this neighborhood was promised a residential zone in perpetuity. Lately, the current situation at the high school is not indicative of protecting our residential feeling and neighborhood. We support this plan. We want a beautiful high school for our town. We want a beautiful neighborhood, and we want to protect our fragile historic environment which is actually part of the POCD. These two don't have to be separate. We can do this together as a community. Beautiful neighborhood, safe neighborhood, great high school. We can do it. We are concerned about putting these two things together or separate. We want to make sure that this egress goes through and is not ignored. Um, we're a little burned because the MISA project did not work out so well for us. We were promised more trees, landscaping, traffic, and parking. We got none of this. Um, so we would like you to remember our fragile historic neighborhood, our neighbors, and to please take the burden off of Hillside Road. Thank you very much. Thank you. Elizabeth Dempsey, followed by Bill Drake. Hi, I think um, Ashley kind of spoke um, uh, uh, for a lot of us neighbors, so I won't repeat it. Um, I might just add two things. Again, I'm Elizabeth Dempsey and I'm at 21 Hillside, and um, I participated in the Parking and Traffic Committee, and so um, we all know that there's been an increase in students having cars. The demand for students to be able to drive themselves is, is large and understandable. Um, but I just would ask you to look at the larger, not just athletic, um, needs of this. I am for a strong high school. Um, I am for making this high school be a draw to young families considering coming to Greenwich. And I want strong athletic programs that deliver kids to the best schools. Um, despite the fact that, you know, I'd rather not pay for the taxes, I would pay more taxes for a beautiful stadium. Um, so I'm in support of it. Um, but it's not just about athletics and the fact that Greenwich Obviously, I'm, I'm interested in it because it will greatly help um, Hillside Road, but the fact that we have such an amazing high school, large population, um, a wealthy um, population, we don't have a second form of egress is frightening to me, and as a board, I would think that that would be, in addition to the, the, um, the stadium bleachers, that your security is first and foremost, and I don't really feel like I, I'm hearing a lot of that. Um, so I would also echo all the concerns of everybody else who stood up and said that daily, daily egress is something that should be put on the table. And so I advocate um, for a second, for simultaneous, um, but please don't lose sight of phase two, because I'm getting the sense, I, I'm hearing it, like it's kind of 
wait, did you vote as a committee on all of that? And I think you did. Um, so I hope that you do include a simultaneous start to that. Um, I don't think it's a lot of money, and I think the parents are concerned, and it's really your job first and foremost. So thanks so much for listening. Thank you very much. Next speaker is Bill Drake. Hi. Hey, Bill. Uh, I just want to comment that uh, you, with Painting and Heat, did a very strategically well thought through thing with foresight when you drew those tennis courts and with the no possible seasonal rink to go here. There's a big demand for ice time in this town. It's uh, you know, one of your extraordinary strengths at Greenwich High is your swimming and water polo teams. That is a partly driven by the fact that you have a pool, a wonderful facility on your campus. If we were to build an ice facility on your campus, you'd be in a position to say you'd be one of the few, or maybe the only, public high schools with a skating facility for your teams on campus. This is a very popular sport at, at Greenwich High. You have the potential for boys varsity hockey, boys JV hockey, girls varsity <coughs> hockey, girls JV <coughs> hockey. And if we put you, put a tennis court, put a seasonal rink where those tennis courts are not being used in January and the rink not being used in July, it's perfectly complementary. And it enables us to free up time at the handle rink, which we sell to other users in town for $500 an hour. A multi-year contract, multi-month contract, that we can obtain at Hamill for other users in town quickly gets into a very large amount of money, which we then can devote to building this facility on your campus for your students. So that was very well done. It's not a decision for today, but keep it alive. Let us work on it together. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like Bill's paying for it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you just committed to vote for it in BD. Yeah. We only need uh, six more. All right. Uh, is there anybody else that wishes to address the board? Mr. Crawl, why don't you come on down? And Tom? I wonder what you want to talk about. It's already been said. Exactly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and fellow board. A couple of points. I have been part of a lot of the committee meetings and involved, obviously, with the GAF. I think we have to understand a couple of things here and, and take a little bit of a step back. When we met in June, we, the uh, stating committee met in June, I should say, uh, I believe it was Dr. Jones' first meeting, actually. Uh, we had town attorney John Wetmore at the meeting at that time. And Mr. Wetmore was very clear in that meeting and stated that if we began the application process that day or that month, that we would be 12 to 16 months before we had the necessary permits to construct anything on that site. So, I appreciate the energy that Russ is bringing and trying to move this forward as quickly as possible, but I think in a real world scenario and knowing the process, uh, I don't think there's anybody in this room that's been through more of the process in this town than I have, and from both waterfront, wetlands, building, zoning, zoning, CBAs, you name it, I've been through them all on multiple different occasions. I can tell you that the process is going to take some time, and we need to be prepared for that. So I, I, I would caution everybody not to get too excited about seeing building permits for this spring. It's going to take some time to get that done. Uh, with that being said, I don't believe that we should be removing the visitor site bleachers from the project. The bleachers do sit within the wetlands limit line, but wetlands are determined by soil content, not the wetlands limit line. They draw that line for 100 feet around any water course that runs through any property. Greenwich High School as a site has wetlands on it and thereby is uh, entitled to wetland review no matter what you do. So that's going to come into play no matter how we go about it. The soils in the area of the visitor site bleachers are not wetland soils. The water course runs through a concrete culvert in that area. The soils above it are as dry as they are. When we did these, the lights 20 years ago, it was a simple sign off from wetlands. The wetlands application can be done simultaneously as well as planning and zoning applications. I believe we should get the stadium together, get the stadium done. There's an economy of scale, there's a savings to doing all the bleachers together, to being able to bid it out under one contractor, to do a lot of different excavating, 
and designs and everything that should be considered in a comprehensive stadium project. 30 seconds. Thank you. I believe that what also should be done here is that that part be put back into phase one of the stadium, uh, the visitor side into the entire stadium project, and that the board, as it goes forward, should consider forming two different committees at this point in time. One to focus on the stadium, because I believe that can move along forward as well as I said. They have a lot of the design done, and we can push that. I believe you need another group that's going to focus on that second phase that has the interest of the road and the bridges and everything. Time. will support that as far as the GF and all this goes. Thank, so thank you very much. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Tom Agresta. It's, it's interesting because I was always a one trick pony on this. I was just talking about how we have a 440 yard track, it should be 400 meters, it should be eight lanes. But Ralph has graciously invited me to a couple of the build, building committee meetings, and I learned a lot more to this. I, I actually support what's going on here. I still think we should do the track at the same on the first phase. Why? Because I've lived here for you know, 30 years. I know if we, like me, it may take five years. And remember, that's a facility that's not, a, not up to. Uh, standard for our athletes that really this is more about the athlete than it is anything else so i'm going to say it many times we got to get the facility right for the athletes let them have the right facility and then worry about the rest of it by the way it should cost less than two hundred thousand dollars to do this maybe far less because i think last time i noticed when they researched the track it was like seventy eighty thousand dollars so it's really not expensive to do this so i think we should do this and I like the idea of here about the hockey, so this is something new when I work with Trump. You know, if that's something we can put in, that's not a bad idea. In fact, on the, on the field itself, you could, you know, like they have the winter classics at all these football stadiums. You could put something there, you know, a temporary hockey rink. <laughs> that's up to everyone. But I think you got a lot of support from a lot of people in town here. I think you'd be surprised by some of the people that have to approve this. You're gonna, I think you're going to find support. And we fixed the track, I'll really be supportive. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Please introduce yourself. Um, hi, my name is Julie Ibarra. I have a junior daughter, um, and I have uh, a son and a daughter in eighth grade. All three of them are, uh, well, the high schooler is definitely a three-sport athlete. The other two are probably going to be three-sport athletes. Um, we will be using the facilities. Uh, but it's not only for the athletes. Um, graduation is coming, and it would be nice if we can also use the bleachers for graduation. Uh, the only uh, the reason I'm up here, the primary reason I'm up here, is because, um, like voting, I think it's a civic duty to encourage the good things that can happen in our community. You know, whether it's uh, handicap access, which is very important. There are grandparents who come, want to come to the game and they have a very difficult time coming. The safety issues, including cell tower, which is a revenue generator, although there's issues about you know, brain damage. Um, and, um, and uh, the revenue generator, you know, all sorts of good things, transportation. Um, please, please, please get this done as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if there's nobody to, nobody else that wishes to speak. Mr. Kelly, do you have a motion? I would like the motion to adjourn. All right. Is there I'll second that. Second from uh, the birthday girl. All those in favor of adjourning? We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you, Miss Bone. Bye, Megan. Bye, thank you.